Okay, starting off turn number seven, Alyssa's down for the second time. So when we get back around to her fate, uh, her turn, she's gonna have to use the second healing surge to come back. Arjun. Mm, let's see, Dragon's Breath. Attack each monster on your tile. This does not count as an attack. So uh, one option would be to have Arjun move up to the next tile, attack both, but he has a pretty decent chance of missing because they're, that's only a plus four and their AC is 15. So option number one, he can try to move up one tile, take them both out, but he would not get to explore. Option number two we could have him move all the way to a new tile. He could use Trapping Strike to draw one of the spiders over to him and attack it with a plus eight. So he'd have a much higher chance of hitting it. So that would be an option. And then he still has the Lucky Charm, so if he, if he missed, he could try again. So he would have two chances with the Trapping Strike to take out one of the spiders. And then when Alyssa pops back up, she can just ping whichever spider is left to take it out. So I think that's what we're going to do. Arjun's going to move. He's got a speed of five. He's not slowed down. He's going to go one, two, three, um, and that's good enough. He can Now he's on an unexplored edge. So let's update for Arjun. So he... Does not need a surge. He moved. He is going to attack with the trapping strike. Now he's going to attack. I guess it probably doesn't matter which spider. Just as long as well, yeah, it does matter because he wants to kill hit the one that would activate during his turn, which uh, was this one. So he has this ability, Trapping Strike, that lets him pull a monster over to him and then attack it. So he's going to Trapping Strike this guy, pull it adjacent to him, and then attack it with a plus eight. If for any reason he misses, we're going to reroll. So Trapping Strike um, rolls 17, so he gets, uh, that's fortunate, so he hits it and kills it. And that was his spider, so his spider goes down. So we'll place that onto the experience pile. His spider goes down. Now, luckily, we don't have that situation where they both activate. That's that's like the worst situation to be in in this game. So Arjun uh, attacked. He killed, so he does get a treasure card. Killed that spider. So let's have him draw a treasure. And he gets another lucky charm. So, good. Now he can re-roll a couple times. Um, and he is on an unexplored edge, so he's going to explore. So let's draw the next tile. It's a very good chance it's the chapel. And it is. Alright, so now we kick off the in-game stuff here. But... Mm, well, we have a few things to do before we worry about that. So it's a white tile, and we uh, we do draw a monster like normal. This is one thing when I watch people on YouTube play this adventure, they don't get this part right. So we're going to make sure we get it right. So we draw a monster like normal, which is a, a blazing skeleton, and we place it on the bone pile. Because here's the thing in the rules clarification. So it says the monsters placed on the chapel tile are in addition to the normally placed monster. There should be one more monster on the tile than the number of players. Because when you get to the chapel, and this the rules are confusing, so anybody that gets this wrong, I completely understand. Because it says, uh, you know, when a hero finds the chapel, do the following. Each player draws a monster card and places the monster on the, ch on the chapel tile. So if you just read that, 
logically you would think, okay, so each player draws a monster card, places the monster on the chapel tile, and that's it. So I draw one for Arjun, I draw one for Alyssa, that's two monsters. That's the way this reads. There's no, there's no reasonable way that you would think to draw that extra monster if they didn't have that rules clarification. So, so anyway, so that's the next thing that we do is that we draw another monster for Arjun and then we draw a monster for Alyssa. Um, and we also place the icon of Ravenloft on the chapel. So we draw a monster for Arjun it's going to be a skeleton. So let's just update our stuff here. So he got a blazing skeleton. So under his control now he has a gargoyle, a blazing spell, uh, skeleton, and a regular skeleton. And then Alyssa is going to draw a monster. And she gets a wraith. Yikes. So we place down a wraith, and I forgot to get the regular skeleton, put it there. Okay, so now there's no encounter because it was a white tile, however, the rules say that when you get to the chapel, so we've done the first thing, we've placed the monsters, we've placed the icon, now it says for the rest of the adventure, each player draws an encounter card at the start of his or her villain phase. So, and that counts for this turn. So even though we normally don't draw an encounter card for white tiles, we do, however, get an encounter because of the chapel. So now we draw an encounter that we can't cancel. And it's an ambush. Attack each hero on the active hero's tile. That's just going to be Arjun. No damage, but it slows us down if it hits. So not the worst. Plus 8. 13 plus 8, that's going to hit and slow us down. So, but no damage. So Arjun is also slowed. So slow. Now, Gargoyle activates. It perks up, looks around, doesn't see anything, goes back to sleep. Blazing Skeleton activates. If it's within one tile, it is. It attacks each hero on the closest hero's tile with the Ball of Fire. And right now, that's just going to be Arjun. So it attacks with a plus seven. Sixteen. Um... I'm going to have it re-roll. I'm going to use one of my lucky charms to have it re-roll. Do I want to do that or do I want to save that for my stuff? Yeah, let's save that because even if it misses, it's going to do a damage. So set, uh, it got a it hit. So it takes us down to four. Now the skeleton activates. And if it's adjacent, it's not... Otherwise, it'll move adjacent and attack with a slice. So it would move to the bone pile, but the bone pile won't make it adjacent. So in this case, it'll move here and attack with a slice, which is a plus nine. 14 plus nine, that's going to hit. Do we want to reroll this one? Um, so if it misses, it doesn't do anything, but it's a plus nine, so it's... I think we'll save our rerolls for our attacks, but that is going to take us all the way down to two hit points. Oh boy. Just thinking. All right, that's uh, huh, that's it for Arjun's turn. Now Alyssa is on her turn seven, so she has to use a healing surge, the last one. Though the game does say we can use a third one if we want to have an easier set of rules, but that's it. Can't, can't go beyond the third one. So Alyssa perks up. She's still slow because that hasn't worn off, which means she can't do much. 
So I think hmm, may be best just to have her take out that spider just to get it out of here. And that would actually give us enough experience to cancel an encounter. Otherwise, she can move over to the skeleton and take it out, but the skeleton is probably less of a threat than the spider. And the spider will activate during her turn. Alright, so Alyssa, well, actually, hang on, she has a, she does have her powers that she hasn't used yet. And the one thing I want to do is I want to put this out on the table now so I have to see it. Because basically this just lets one of, let, lets somebody miss the next time they attack. But also I need to mark token and she's at four. Now one thing she can do is she could move and she can attack both of those monsters on, on the chapel. Actually she doesn't even have to move to do that. Choose a tile within two tiles and attack two monsters on that tile. That's probably the best thing for her to do, actually. And she has a lucky charm, so she can actually... She would, she would, attack, she would roll two times, I'm assuming. Let me see. If you miss and that monster is more than one tile away from you, place it. Yeah, I'm assuming she would roll to attack one of them and then roll again to attack the other one. Nice thing is, actually, we can kill both of them. Because, well, we can kill one of them. I think. So, she can stay put. She can attack the Wraith and the Blazing Skeleton. If she misses, we can use a Lucky Charm to roll again. And then, so she gets she gets two attacks. Yeah, she can attack both. So if she rolls and hits, it kills one of them. And then and then she gets to attack the other one. And if she attacks and misses, she can use the lucky charm to re-roll that that roll because you know there's a difference between rolls and attacks. All right, so let's have her do that. But let me just think. Because that spider will activate during her during her villain phase. But so will the blazing skeleton cuz that's under her. No. No, only the spider will activate. So if we take out the spider then the only thing that will activate during her turn is the zombie, and the only thing it's going to do is move one closer. And then... And then I could have her move over by the skeleton, because I think she's two squares. Yeah, she's two squares away from that. Um, you know what? I, st I just feel like this is the best thing to do. All right, this is what we're going to do. Final answer. Okay, so first she's going to attack the Wraith. And she gets a plus six on this attack. And it's an eight. Eight plus six is 14, so she missed. So on a miss, it takes one damage, or we can re-roll. We're going to re-roll. Wait. Yeah, she's going to re-roll. Nine. Nine plus six is 15. So she hits the Wraith and kills it. The Wraith has a death shriek. When the Miss Monster is destroyed, each hero on the tile takes one damage. There are no heroes on that tile. Wraith is gone. So we take out the Wraith. That's a big threat off the table. Now that was one attack. She used her Lucky Charm, but that was one attack. 
where these go here. So now she has a second attack. Now the second attack is going to target the blazing skeleton. And she cannot re-roll this one. 14. And that's going to be enough to hit and kill it. So because it's a plus 6, which is a 20, but she doesn't even need that because the blazing skeleton only has a 13. So the blazing skeleton goes down. This was an excellent use of that resource. So now she flips it, it's over, she doesn't have that anymore. Okay, let's update. So Alyssa has not yet moved, she attacked, she killed, and even though she killed two monsters, she only gets one treasure, that's how the rules are written. Hopefully she'll gain some hit points, or actually hopefully gain hit points and then give them to Arjun. Attack each monster on your tile, this attack does not count as an attack action. That might actually still be better to go to Arjun. Wait a minute, Blazing Skeleton's gone, I forgot to move it. Actually, we're going to win this, I'm pretty sure. Let me think, how do I want to distribute? Attack each monster on your tile, it does not count as an attack. Actually, Shu will take it because Arjun already has an ability like this. Okay. Alright, so... <clears throat> and she's going to stay put. I think. No, she's going to move. She's going to go... One, two, so she's still adjacent to everything, but she got two squares closer. So she moved. She's not exploring. So no tile, no new monster, slowed wears off. Now we have an encounter because we did not explore. And we have an encounter because we take an encounter every turn. And that's another thing that sucks about this one. But in the rules clarification, uh, Adventures 2 and 4, the encounter drawn, the encounter card drawn every villain phases in addition to any other encounter that might be drawn. So if you don't explore, you draw two encounter cards. Very brutal. So... Encounter number one for not exploring. We get Spirit of Doom. Each hero can immediately move up to his or her speed. After this move, each hero on a tile with no monsters takes one damage. This is an easy one, no-brainer. So, each hero can immediately move. Doesn't say you have to. And then after that move, and the other thing is if we had to move, we could just go in circles because it doesn't say we have to go to another tile or anything like that. But So this one does nothing in, in this instance. After this move, each hero on a tile with no monsters takes one damage. Lucky, lucky for us, there's a monster on our tile. So this one es essentially fizzles. It does nothing. So then we take an encounter, our second encounter, for being at the chapel, or for having uncovered the chapel. So... Summoning circle. Place a new monster adjacent to the active hero. Now, this one we probably will cancel. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we can win this game um, really soon here. So, we're going to go ahead and cancel that. So, we've got two, three, four, five. So, there's our five experience to cancel that encounter. It never happened. So that cancels that encounter. So now she has the zombie. I forgot she saw that spider though, didn't I? But that might be okay. So zombie activates because we have this thing. So zombie activates, it goes bone pile to bone pile. Now it's getting, it still has another turn or so to go before it's gonna be caught up to us. Now the spider activates, 
and if it's adjacent, which it is, it attacks that hero. Okay, so it's adjacent to Alyssa, so it's going to attack Alyssa with the um, with the bite. So it's got a plus six. So that's a 13 plus 6 is uh, 19, so obviously that's going to hit. I was thinking about using Unbalancing Parry. So use this power when an adjacent monster hits you. The attack misses instead. Place that monster on a tile within one tile of you. So is it worth using this? Because on a miss, it still does 1. So we take... Think, think, think. Probably still worth it. Yeah, we're going to use it. So it it missed, but on a miss, it still does one damage. So Alyssa goes down to three. And that is going to be the end of her turn number seven. And that's going to be the end of turn number seven altogether. And I'm pretty confident that we go, we're going to win the game because the, the win condition is that uh, you win this adventure when they destroy all of the monsters that were placed on the chapel and you recover the icon of Ravenloft. So we don't have to destroy all the monsters on the board. We just have to destroy the monsters that were placed on the chapel. And the monsters that were placed on the chapel were the Wraith, the Blazing Skeleton, and the Normal Skeleton. So all we have to do, we don't even have to kill that spider, we, but we, we have to kill the skeleton and we have to get over here to retrieve the icon of Ravenloft. And that's it. Once we've done that, we've won. And I feel very confident that we can do that in the next turn.